Howdy all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2 for Remote Edition. In the previous episode, we basically took care of adding some new trains, as well as updating some of our old ones, as well as building this new bypass track to allow more of our freight trains to bypass the station of Longhorn, as it has become a bit of a bottleneck. But also at the same time, we also acquired some new rolling stock that we could definitely be using to replace some of our aging stock. And in this episode, we're going to continue on by doing that, as well as acquiring some new services to finally fulfill one of the missions of basically getting every type of commodity shipped by our transport company. Now, before we started this episode off, I did some work of replacing some of our agent equipment. Now we have the new FMC boxcar and the new 89-foot black cars, which will be very beneficial to carrying more cargo. Plus, I also rerouted some of our trains so they won't basically clog up the tracks at Longhorn. Now, let's see. I think today we'll basically focus on starting our deliveries of general goods from the factory. So, according to the consumers list, the two towns that need it are the towns of Riverside and Shineston, which is located right here. We have yet to actually, we don't, I don't think we actually had any chance of delivering any lubricants at all to here yet. But that could easily be taken care of with a, with a freight train. But we'll also need to, like, upgrade this, uh, warehouse. It's quite old and it needs a new road. Street type, new, country new, road type, country new. And of course, I need to update this uh, roadway as well. There we go. Now, let's actually get started on setting up our new freight lines. Now, let's see. We'll pick up a load of general goods from the factory. And it will be taken to the Riverside Freight Yard. On track 2. This freight train will be known as TS-11C. Freight train TS-11C, which will be general goods. Alright. Now what we'll just need to do is just buy a train to handle it. But because of the traffic jam that we are having here for all of my trains to get out onto the open main line, I think it's about time that we start investing in a new engine facility. Hmm. Let's see if we can invest one somewhere near along this area. The old one will still be in use, but any trains we before now will basically be built in this at this new facility. We'll basically curve it off from the main line here. And then basically connect this here at the double slip switches. Finally add a new engine depot. Which will probably maybe be this wagon depot. Although the collision for this is not that great. Because I think it's basically in the ground. So, I'm going to probably uh, increase the brush size so at least the ground can be a little more smoother for our new operations. And of course, I want to get rid of a lot of these trees blocking the way. I'll delete that for now, and let's basically add in the depot. Let's see, the te model for the tower, metallic, there will be a wall, uh, add a second shed, uh, a third shed, I guess, and same thing as well. Let's see. Now, this depot, I tried experimenting this on my my free time, so I may not be sure on how this will work. But, 
we'll be renaming this to the Kingsburg Diesel Shops. Now, let's invest in a new train to carry manufactured goods. Now, let's see. We'll get a pair of the EMD JP38-2s. Cargo type. Let's see. Goods. And we'll use a couple of these FMC boxcars, as well as a couple of these 89-foot flat cars. That'll, that'll basically be good enough. Go to all cargo types and get a bay window caboose. And assign it to the new service. And hopefully the train will basically get out of the yard and onto the open line. Unable to find path to stop. Great. That means the track that I put in is not the correct one. Let's try this track. Will that one work? Let's see. Freight train S. No. Uh. Hmm. Let's, uh. Try the middle track. There we go. The middle track is always the one that's supposed to be used then. And while we're at it, we might as well add some signals on this to prevent the trains from crashing into each other on the open line. But yeah, now we have our own diesel shops. So diesel locomotives will come here for maintenance. Though I am going to probably extend the tracks out a bit so we can have some little props added. This is where the diesels will be stored in between shifts, and repairs will be done inside this complex right here. And, since some of the diesels are complete, the longer diesels will basically have priority on this longer stall. Though, if diesels need to travel into the maintenance facility, I might as well modify some of these switches here so all the tracks can be used. There. Now we just have to wait for... Now that train has to wait for a clear track. As this train is normally used for carrying champagne has the right of way. Now then, let's actually see if we can add a couple of decorations into this area. Let's see. We can add a cup. We can add the Fairbanks Morris diesel locomotive as a prop. Let me see. Can the engine fit pretty well? Huh. The locomotive fits pretty well inside the diesel shop. Although it doesn't do so well underneath this metal roof, which kind of stinks. What about a couple of these diesels? What about the diesel switchers? Uh, kind Actually, yeah, I think these diesels can fit. These diesels are just going to be static props here. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, for a second I thought the game crashed for a moment. But it didn't. Thank lord. Ugh. Oh, we got a new bus, the C60, got a new airplane... And a new GG1. Well, these are basically former GG1s of the Pennsylvania, but now primarily used in commuter service. And along with some uh, Conrail Patch DE44s, and a new trolley, and some new uh, iron ore jetties, which will be very useful. A new transfer caboose, and a new passenger car for our commuter trains. The Bombardier High Level, and Greenwood Needs Tools and Alcohol. Don't know why, but... Oh well. However, maybe... Maybe we'll just basically, uh... 
Maybe we could leave a couple of the older diesels here. These diesels are planned to be used for my company's brand new uh, excursion program in the not too distant future. So these diesels that are here will be basically put on standby in case they're needed. Uh, maybe I might be able to squeeze in this, uh, Miss Fairbanks Morris here as well. Okay. We can also just make it, uh, Let's see, we can also apply an office to the back, or just doors to make it a run-through shed. Huh, it works pretty well, I think. Uh, I know I said I was going to focus on trains, but one of the fun things about this game is the ability to basically place down your own props. Make your railroad, make your uh, transport company a little more different from all the others. But I think I'll just leave it as it is, and we have yet to retire the Fairbanks Morris, so we'll just leave it as it is. But this little diesel switcher will be used to primarily move the diesel locomotives into the shops for repairs, and uh, trains mutually blocked. Oh, no wonder! A train that's supposed to pick up silver bars is stuck because the tracks are supposed to go through here. Uh, And the commuter train is blocking the way. And it won't be able to get back to the station because the, because the signals are not set properly. When the train gets blocked, it basically delays all the other trains. But, at least with a new bus, we could basically get started on, well, actually, let's get started on adding a new train to deliver loads of general goods from the factory up to Shinestown. Now, according to this, the highest number right now is 13, so this new service will be number 14. Pick up, car pick up general goods down at the factory. And then take them up to the Shinestin Freight Yard. This will be known as Freight Train TS 14A General General Goods. Hopefully, that freight train will have to basically travel on that route. But now, with that out of the way, let's see. Have we already set up the train? There's already another train. I or Oh, right, I bought that already. So, let's actually have a look at train number... Route 14. Well, Town Supply 14A. Let's see, it will basically travel through this line. Oh, right through that. That will not be good. Hmm... I think I might have a better idea. I'll make it just travel through the signals at Grand Valley to the to this line. Because this route is a lot more fast is a lot more direct. Though it will have to go through this signal on the way there, and then this signal on the way back, I think. Uh signal track could not be connected. Uh, let's see. Alright, the Shinestin line is not Let's see. The Shinestin line is connected to this bridge, which is connected to this route here. I might actually need to get started on building a new bypass line. Which will probably be the case right now. As much as I don't want to build a track right now over this main line here, I don't have much of a choice. 
so guess I'll have to build another bridge over the river. Modern bridge, I think it should probably be made of steel. Thankfully, there's no ship routes that go through that area, so the bridge is fine at its height. We'll expand over the river, and then we'll basically try to uh, do this. Connect that, and do that. Now the new route is basically ready to go. Hopefully I can be able to add the signal here on the return track. Yep. With that in mind, now the, the new route is now able to deliver loads of goods without any concerns. Speaking of which, we have yet the right pick. Our train of steel is still on its way, though it's still waiting at a red signal. Oh! We also have a new version of the Conrail E44 Electric, and that's it. And what about the train carrying plastics? Okay, now the freight train is on its way back to pick up the load of plastics. But let's actually see on why this train is waiting at a red signal. Waiting for free path. Oh. There's so many darn si the tracks are too far apart for signaling, so... Uh, time to place down another set of signals, I suppose. Let's see, where is that signal gantry? Signal gantry, signal gantry. Uh, here we are. We'll do a four-track span. And of course, we'll add some of these bridge mount signals. There we go. At least now that the track is clear, at least some of my trains can get rolling again. And hopefully it will eventually clear up the track to allow this commuter train to get out. Let's see. Speaking of which, the new commuter trains have just based the new electric passenger trains have finally started to come out. Though, I think, because of the more modern electrics that we now have, I think it's actually time to put some of the old electric express trains out to pasture. For one, the GG1 type electric has been around for, two, for so long, since the 30s, so it's already over 40 years old. We'll basically replace it with the AEM-7s, known as the Toasters, and replace them with the brand new Westrail Westley coaches. It has a lot more power than the GG1, and it will be able to handle the service a lot better. Let's see, which one is the other Express? Yeah, train 48 is starting to starting to look a little bit out of date. So, that engine will go as well and replace with the AEM7 and 10 West Rail coaches. Now, let's see what else needs to be taken care of. Oh yeah, the electric freight trains. There are still some electric locomotives that are still being used. But I think the one care these electric freights are starting to show their age. Like these little Joe electrics, they're not capable of handling heavy loads anymore. I'll probably get this this one. I mean, this is the only prototype ever built, so I might as well use this because of its extreme amount of power.
once the game basically loads it in, of course, then this locomotive will basically handle the gold trains full time. Until we get something a little more stronger than that to handle it. And now, let me see. There was supposed to be another train that was supposed to carry ore. Bauxite, yes, but that one's powered by diesel, not electric. Let's see. Electric train A. Uh... This one is carrying silver ore. That one could be replaced with something a little more modern instead. Let's see. The Little Joe Electrics can have 11,000 power, but maybe I could replace it with some of these old GG1s. They did haul freight in their spare time before their retirement on the Pennsylvania, so we'll probably use these to handle the loads of electric freight. I mean, sure, it's not a grand sight for these old classic passenger engines on freight traffic, but... I mean, the Little Joe Electrics are starting to get a little... Plus, uh, let's see... Bridgeland needs cigarettes, and I don't think I have shipped any of them yet. Not to mention, lubricants can also be brought in by... I think I might as well add an electric freight operation to deliver loads of uh, lubricants in. All I just need to do is just add the electrification to the station, and then just assign a new electric engine to deliver it. Let's see. Full load, if available. It will pick up loads of lubricants from the station and take it to Shinestone Yard. This will be known as Freight Train 14B. Freight Train TS 14B Lubricants. By the way, I need to also set up a freight to look, pick up, order some trucks. Now let's see, we'll place down a truck delivery stop here. Let's see. We might as well use the new Peterbilt truck. And I like these type of trucks painted in orange. So... It will pick up loads of general goods from there. Which I think is known... This will be known as... Let's see... Truck Service H1. Truck service H1. You will only be picking um, manufactured goods. Let's see. Okay. And the other will be H2, which will pick up loads of lubricants. So, truck service H2. You'll have a full load as well. 10 minutes. And, let's see. You'll get a, I'll get a Peterbilt truck for that service. that in mind, now this truck will pick up loads of general goods from the warehouse and take it into town so it will be used by the town's residents. As long as we're able to improve the passenger numbers in the town, we'll basically get a lot more people to ride our lines. Speaking of which, I just realized I have yet to actually place down roofs at this station. I also got a new airplane, and a new diesel rail car. The SPV2000, some new pickup trucks, speaking of which I need to add down the new roof.
Also, I just realized my electric tracks do not have a walk platform to separate itself from the main line. I'll need to fix that. But of course, I'm pausing the game for a little bit so I can at least be able to fix it without any traffic jams. We'll add this down so at least trains can basically travel on this. There we go. Now passengers can easily access the two express train platforms as well as access the bay platforms for commuter trains. And now we just need to set up another train to pick up loads of lubricants from the factory. Let's see. Black Diamond Electric Train Depot. Let's see, I think we'll just use another E44 on this service. We'll get lubricants, which is here. And we'll be using this new tank car. Well, not new, just the standard stock one, along with a caboose. Obviously, because we're still using these. And then we'll just put it to work on the new service. Let's see. There we go. And I think that will basically do it for this episode. So, if you had enjoyed this episode of us on my Let's Play Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my outside schedule. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!